Item six, approval of board policies and objectives. 6.1, uh, policy 121, meetings revised. It's on the first reading, pages six through seven. Item 6.2, policy 122, the quorum revised, first reading, page 8. Item 6.3, policy 123, preparation of meetings revised, first reading, page 9. Uh, 6.4, policy 124, order of business revised, first reading, page 10. Uh, 6.5, policy 125, meetings of uh, minutes of meetings of order of business revised. And uh, policy 126, parliamentary procedures revised, page 12. Policy 1.27, adoption, revision, and repeal revised, first reading, page 13. 6.8, policy 128, suspension revised, first reading. And policy 6.9, remote attendance at board of trustees meeting revised, first reading. Policy 6.10, uh, 130, ethics revised, first reading. Um, comments, questions, concerns on 6.1 through 6.10. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, on understand you to say even though a board member is participating remotely as long as there was a quorum of trustees physically present that that remote trustees vote does count yes um, okay I got um, 
page nine on the, uh, the meeting agenda. Uh, I'm wondering if there should be some language in here about preparing the agenda uh, somehow in conjunction with the chairman or something of that nature. I would concur. Uh, and if we can include something that says that. I thought we had that in there already. It's not here now. No, I don't see anything in at least my understanding has always been the president prepares the agenda and then the chairman reviews it and approves it or whatever. So, uh, so we should include language in there too. Yes. Also, uh, just a comment on the 129, page 15. Uh, Bob, are you the one that is really going through all of these uh, policies? Andrew Rogers and I went through this. Uh, well, congratulations, well done. I saw a three-page policy now condensed to a two-paragraph policy. Uh, that's a good thing, so thank you. Uh, and then lastly, uh, just on policy 130, uh, page 18, uh, not that this one's a big deal, but I, I kind of like to look at consistency in our language uh, across all of our policies and for whatever reason, in this policy, uh, the second line, uh, the last word there, board trustees shall avoid blah, blah, blah. Uh, in all of our other policies, we refer to us as board members. Uh, it's no big deal, but if you want to make them consistent, you might want to look at that one as well. Thank you. Uh, Bob, we, uh, when you and Derek and I had a phone conference on these, we talked about 124 a little bit, uh, that one. Uh, whether that was page 10. Well, I looked at that as well. And it's, you know, we don't want to be boxed into not having different arrangements of the agenda if we want to do that. I looked at this, Bob, it's uh, looking here on page 10. Um, if there's no concern about we have to follow this order, but the word generally is in there. And if we wanted to change the order, we could do that, uh, of course. There's nothing that obligates the board to so adopt an policy that outlines exactly what order of the board meeting will be <coughs> and the, on a monthly basis is going to establish. You can, you know, different uh, units of local uh, government protection, sometimes they just have custom, sometimes they have procedures. A lot of times, and that most times they probably don't explain those in policy. CLC has, uh, you know, it, it, we thought it was very restrictive, so it's very restrictive when I had to work in general, but the board doesn't have to have a policy to specify the function. So. Generally, is where they like to Generally, of course, the board and the chair and the president to uh, change the board. Okay. Any other questions? I was just trying to comment about the 130 as the trustee or Slater pointed out, where you're going to change the word that you're going to use each board member. And you're just going to have to be consistent in the following line, too, and use it again. That's the important thing. Right. Okay. Six, four, one, three, six, one. Okay. Make it consistent. Okay, great. Anything else? 